Hi guys, Black Wolf here, and I am reading chapter 41. The one that I said I wanted to read to you in the first place because it reveals all. Well, this is the chapter. Uh, I'm sorry if I read really quickly. I didn't realize how fast I read, but I'm sorry. Since Connor's traveling group had now swelled from only himself, Mott, and rode into a group of seven, we were informed that there would be a delay before we could be ready to leave. Tobias looked pleased and relieved, but Roden's expression was almost murderous as he stomped away. I wasn't sure why, where he was going, but he knew he'd return. But I, but knew he'd return when it was time to leave. He couldn't risk being left behind. After changing into riding clothes upstairs, I told Ma I wanted to go for a ride. This may be my last chance to truly, to be truly alone, perhaps ever. I said. I explained. Let me have this. Have that time in the thought. Ma, give me permission. Permissive bow. I said. Be careful. You're Connor's prize now. I never care for all careful, I said. Grinning, Ma didn't smile back. I, I walked past the kitchen toward the back door of the farther one that would lead me to the stables. And it was only barely outside before someone punched me in the arm. Not a hard punch compared to most of the hits I'd taken, but an angry one. And Morgan had been standing just outside the door. She'd probably see me in the writing closet and came out to wait for me. What was what was that for? I asked, rubbing my arm. She glanced around to make sure we were alone, then said, How dare you, Sage? How dare you interfere with my life? Genuinely, I com I'm genuinely confused. I took her by the elbow and led her away farther away from the door. Beside a tall hedge where we would not easily not be easily seen. What are you talking about? I asked. What have, what have I done? You're the prince now? Looks that way. Tears welled in her eyes, though she was obviously trying hard to push them back. Are you bringing me to Juliet with you? I can't get away. From, I can't get. You, I can get you away from here from whoever treats you so badly. And then what, Sage? What happens to me and Juliet? I shrugged, unable to understand why she was so angry. To eat. You go for you. Once I made prince, I'll have access to the treasury. I'll pay off your mother's debt to your con to Connor, and you're free. She shook her head stiffly. I won't have your charity, not from an orphan, and certainly not from a prince. It's not charity. You're my friend, and I won't. I want to help, if possible. That made her even angrier. Do you think it's it's helpful? I had a place here, Sage. I understood my life. You have no life here. I'm giving it back to you. No, you're not. I know what this is. I folded my arms as I faced her. Oh, you're afraid to go to Juliet, correct? A little anxious, perhaps. But that didn't explain her anger. What if I am? I replied. You don't understand what I understand perfectly. You played Connor's game and you won. But now I hit that his decision is made, you're afraid that no one else will believe his lies. You want help in convincing the court. You think by bringing me to Juliet, I'll feel ob obligated to lie, to lie for you. Strong emotions rose in me. Not exactly anger, though. That's how it sounded when I spoke. You think that's my plan? I'd use you in su that I'd use you in such a way? I had no idea such a I was such a horrible person. Her face softened somewhat. You're not horrible, Sage, but look at what Connor's turning you into. Don't you see? I watched you go from this orphan boy who might have become my friend to Connor's prince, who will never be anything but his con custom servant. I'm nobody's servant. Yes, you are. She shook her head sadly. You gave in to him. You let Connor win. I, I didn't think you would. And Morgan, there's so much more happening than you know. And does any of it matter more than your freedom? After a slight hesitation, she added, I'm disappointed in you. I'd rather y you had run. That would be better than this. Run? Truly angry now, I started to walk away. Then turned back to her. Then you condemn Tobias to death. Make road a puppy king and doom yourself to a life here. Clonus held you down for so long you've forgotten what it's like to breathe free air. And you've given your life to his control forever. You'll never breathe free air again. I started to answer to say what was necessary to make her understand, but in the end I hesitated too long and finally only managed to suggest she should pack her things before Connor was ready to leave. She shook her head, then hurried back into the house. As much as I wanted to follow her gut instinct told me that it would only make things worse. She could believe whatever she wanted about me, but she was still coming to Juliet. There were a few stable boys tending to the horses when I arrived there in a few minutes. No sign of Craigan, who was probably now having to get ready for a journey. The longer I avoided him, the better. Craigan wanted Rodin to be chosen. He'd be furious with me for winning at, out at the last minute. I chose a quarter hose horse named Poco for the ride. The stable boy seemed reluctant to give me to let me have it without direct orders from Connor, so I began preparing the saddle myself. Finally, he said he'd do it before I ruined my clothes and got us both in trouble. Riding Poco through the open field was refreshing. I found spots of time alone over the past two weeks, but nothing of freedom. Poco was an excellent horse, instinctively obedient and eager to be tested. 
It wasn't long before Father Wood was lost behind a wooden hill, and all was silent except for the gentle river nearby with the words chirping red. A slight breeze rustled the leaves of the tall trees over my head. I lifted my face to the sky and let the wind and the sun caress my skin. This was freedom. As much as I'd never know it again, and as much as I'd never know ag I'd ever know again. Anyway, if a Mogan had been right about anything, she teased me back at the house. This was it. I slid of Poc I slid off Poco's back and walked him to the edge of the river. This wasn't far from where Windstorm had left me several days ago. The memory forced a smile to my face. I wished for a friend or a father I could tell the story to and make him laugh, either with me or at me. I didn't care. Several smooth rocks lay the along the bank of the river. I grabbed a fistful and flung it, flung them one by one into the water, watching them skip a time or two before disappearing. One rock I kept for myself. It was a little surprise only a few minutes later when another horse snorted in the background. Mott has come, no doubt. I'd seen him watching me from a distance when I was in the stables, and by the time I reached the, ar the arc of the eastern hill, Mott was in the stables. It must have killed him to wait this long before finally approaching me. Do you mind a little company, he asked. Yes. It didn't matter. He mount he dismounted and walked over to me. We stood side by side for a long while, watching the river. Eventually, Mott said, Did you know he'd pick you because of the trick you could do as a coin? I don't think anyone can predict what Connor will do. It's what makes him so dangerous. But you must have guessed it, or else you would have escaped this morning, using the passages. It would have been an easy thing to run. Look what happened to Vladimir when he tried to run. That brought an uncomfortable silence. Finally, Ma said, Connor wants you to know that we're ready to leave soon. Errol is waiting to help you change into traveling clothes. You'd think they'd make traveling clothes more comfortable, I muttered. I believe when I'm king, my first order will to be will be to let everyone wear whatever clothes they want. Mott chuckled. Fashion. What a mighty beginning that will be for your reign. After another pause, he added, What kind of king will you be, Sage? Tyrannical and fierce like Villagrath would be? Complete and indifferent, indifferent like your father? I turned to him. Like Egbert, you mean? Of course, the cost, Mott added. Get used to it. If you're Arger and then Egbert is your father, I'll let that pass. If I'm the prince, then you have higher loyalty to me than Connor, correct? Yes. Then tell me, did Connor kill my family? Can't answer that, Sage. Can't or won't. You haven't been declared the prince yet. I held out my arms to Mott. Who do you see now, Sage or Jaron? Mott studied me for a long time before answering. The bigger question may be, who do you see? I don't know. It's not easy to be one type of person when you've worked so hard to be a different type of person. Mott's reply came so fast, I wondered if he'd been waiting for just that type of opening. And Tommy Sage, which person have you worked so hard to be, the orphan or the prince? He walked to his horse and untied a bundle on its back, unwrapping it as he carried it to me, then set it the imitation of Prince Jaren's sword in my hand. My thumb rubbed over the rubies on his pommel. Thinking of how much you could get for them at the market, Ma asked. No, I held the sword for him. I don't understand. I thought you might want it. You stole it before, didn't you? He didn't wait for an answer. We both knew the truth, which means you have con you have controlled you must have controlled the foul mare Craig gave you long enough to get get to and from the sword arena without being seen. I wouldn't say I ever controlled her, I admitted with a grin. I was sort of worn out by the end, she really did bump me dump me into the river. Mutt smiled and tapped the sword. I figured you must want it back now before we leave for Juliet. Are you giving it to me? Is it mine now? Mott nodded without giving a second glance. I hurled it into the deepest bend of the river. Mott started forward as if to rescue it and turned back to me. What did you do that for? I urged my, bro my head to look at him. The Prince of Carthia will never wear a cheap copy of a sword at his side. That sword is an insult to him. Is that why he stole it? He didn't wait for an answer, which was good because I didn't. I couldn't admit that loud. Aloud. It would have helped you look more authentic. Do you really think I need that, Mott, to help me? Mott nodded very slowly, not in response to my question, but as if he had finally settled something in his mind. No, you will not need that sword, Your Highness. Then you think I can convince them I'm the prince? After a deep breath, Mott lowered himself to one knee and bowed his head. What I think is if you forgive me and my blindness before, is that I've nev I never was looking at Sage the Orphan. I kneel before the living prince of Carthia. You are Prince Jaren. So basically, he barely figured it out not too long ago that 
um, Sage was actually the real prince. He was not, um, like, he, he never was. He was really the real prince that was actually there. Anyway, so, same as usual, um, The False Prince, audiobook part, freaking 42, I'm gonna read the end anyway, I'm almost done, I only have, I only have about 13 chapters, so, yeah, bye guys.